we should probably mute each other as well. Hello everybody and um, welcome this evening to our online live Facebook event um, regarding the, our campaign, Northwest campaign against the NJC pay offer. First they clap us and then they slap us. For those of you that don't know me, my name's Linda Boyer. I'm the chair of the Regional Local Government Service Group. I'm also a Northwest delegate to the NJC and a branch secretary. Uh, we all know that this isn't an ideal time to be consulting members and even less ideal in terms of campaigning and your local, so, so, local government service group rec recognise this um, and recognise that it's also going to place an additional burden on branches given that most of you are now operating remotely um, and so therefore we came up with the idea of this event. Um, this can be streamed directly to members and I'll just go through what the purpose of the event is tonight. So we're going to start off the event with an explanation of what the NJC pay offer is. This will be done by Glenn Williams, who's our regional convener. Um, he's also a Northwest NJC member. Uh, he'll give a brief presentation with some slides that we can email to branches out tomorrow morning. Uh, that will be followed up by my comrade Rena Wood, who's the deputy convener and also a Northwest NJC member, and she'll help you understand the reasons why branches in the Northwest have taken a regional position to reject the pay offer. Uh, then we'll have a short video um, from some members who have been working throughout this pandemic and it will highlight the work that they've done and the changes that they've had to make to accommodate the changing environment and keep the country running. Um, then we'll have more of an interactive session so I'll take any questions and comments from any of you who wish to participate. Uh, this can be done using the chat facility on Facebook um, please bear with me on that because this is all new to me, but uh, you can ask any questions on there and I'll either be able to answer them myself or I'll direct them to one of the panel members to respond. Any questions that we can't answer or we don't get through to answering them all, then we will do so via email tomorrow after the event. And then finally, we'll wrap up tonight with uh, my comrade Carl Greatbatch, who's the Vice Chair of the Local Government Service Group. And Carl will tell you what the next steps are, what the actions are for branches and members and to explain to members why it's so important that they do vote. OK, so I hope I've explained what the running order is for this evening. And we'll start off with Glenn Williams, our regional convener, who will explain what the NJC pay offer is about. Glenn? Thanks very much indeed, Linda, and a very warm welcome to everybody. This is groundbreaking for our Northwest Unison uh, region, so I'm really glad that you're, you're part of it. Even though we can't see you, hopefully you'll be able to see us. 
Um, as Linda has explained, uh, my purpose of the next five or 10 minutes is for me to take you through using some slides, what the, the NJC, which has already been referred to, uh, what that means, who's on it, how it works, who negotiates our pay, how our pay is negotiated, and then I'll move on to what the pay offer is, um, explain the balloting process, and then we'll move smoothly into Rena's um, presentation on how, how, how and why the, um, the pay offer should be rejected. So bear with us for two minutes and I'll just bring up the first slide. And while I'm doing that, can I just warn you that the, um, the chat room record is to be, will be kept. So if you're gonna be abusive to Glenn Williams, expect to be disciplined. Um, I'm sure you, get the, uh, sure you get the message. So I'm hoping that you can see the first slide um, with the very apt title of first they clap us, then they slap us. And thanks to Connor, who's our IT technician guru, who's managed to put all this together for us. So the heading in itself speaks volumes. It's very much the belief of our region. Um, you'll be aware that, you may be aware that Unison has 12 regions. There are 11 regions involved in these pay negotiations from England, Wales, and Northern Ireland. Um, and our region, 200,000 members, is one of those uh, for Unison, and it's by far the biggest. And it's very much the view of the, uh, your regional representatives that, that what we're being offered is a slap in the face, given what's been going on during the pandemic. Hence the title, first they clap us and then they slap us. So what I'm gonna take you through are the, is an explanation of what is the NJC? The NJC is a joint council um, and Unison has its own split off from that, which is called the NJC committee. Um, the NJC is made up of Unison and other trade unions, that's the GMB and Unite. And then the people who we work with are the government's uh, representatives in the form of what's called the LGA, the Local Government Association. So it's, it's a, a national level and they are the people responsible for seeking to agree your pay. And that's often done yearly. Sometimes it's done with a two year pay deal. Sometimes it's done with a three year pay deal. Um, but these are the people who are responsible for, in England, there's 339 councils. In Wales, there's 22. And in Northern Ireland, there's 11. So we're talking about over two and a half million directly employed staff. And um, that's around about one and a half million full-time equivalent people. And that's not including many of you who will be listening and watching this, who are employed by a service, maybe being cheaply transferred. It's maybe a care provider that still remains on what's called NJC conditions. So your pay is determined by what happens at that NJC. So it's that NJC, the National Joint Council, who negotiate. And the committee for Unison, the National Committee, the reps um, for, for your region, if you're in the Northwest, or myself, Linda, as she's already indicated, Rena, and Peter Thorne, uh, who represents the private sector from the Northwest. So we attend those meetings. And what we do in the Northwest is we just don't go to those meetings without any steer or mandate. We have regional meetings. And prior to that, your branches will have discussed what the pay offers are. So it's not, it doesn't happen in a vacuum within Unison. And certainly Northwest region is very proud of the, the democratic way in which we, we, we give our representatives a steer. So if your pay is determined by the nationally joint council um, conditions, then you're in the right place and you're at the right meeting. So the background to this year's pay offer. You don't need me to tell you the, the, the size and scale of the cuts that we've suffered, particularly since 2010, but also prior to that. And it's the, fact, the second fact on that screen is that pay has fallen, and that's an average of 20%. So if you're in an authority who, for example, has had a four-day Christmas shutdown um, imposed, if you've suffered car mileage reductions, essential car user, weekend enhancement, enhancements, overtime reductions, then, then chances are your pay may have fallen in real terms for up to, by up to 28% since 2010. So it's important that the background to the pay offer, what happens is that there's an enormous amount of research goes in to persuade the LGA, to persuade the local government association and all those councils that it represents, that what we're asking for is reasonable and fair. So COVID-19 came along and again, Rena no doubt will make reference to the fact why we believe that we're worth the pay claim that we've submitted. And again, you don't need me to tell you 
the amount of different work, the amount of challenges, unfortunately, the sad number of fatalities that we've, we've experienced um, within, our, within our own union and a disproportionate number of those has fallen sadly, not just to black, um, black and minority ethnic members, but also to our region. Um, you don't need me also to tell you the implications of the, the pandemic in terms of our working circumstances. And we've been clapped. Quite rightly, the NHS was recognised first, but not far behind. We're us local government council workers, care workers, refuse cleansing workers, people who were never recognised before were suddenly getting the applause that they quite rightly deserved on the doorsteps throughout the countries that we, we represent. And throughout that, your regional reps have been meeting. So the pay, the pay offer was submitted last year. And what was, what was asked for actually came from the region in which this presentation is taking place. And our region believed, given that we've suffered an average of 20% loss since 2010 in real terms, what we asked for was a £10 per hour minimum for all those on spinal column point one and a 10% increase on all of the pay points or whichever was the greater. So what we submitted from the Northwest, which was accepted by Unison nationally, which was then taken to the national unions of GMB and Unite, which was accepted by them with some additions, which are listed at the bottom of that slide, that came from our region. Now, if we've lost an average 20% since 2010, we didn't think that was unreasonable. What we also asked for as a joint trade union was a day, uh, an additional day's leave and a reduction to the standard working week alongside a review into stress and mental health. Again, I don't think they're particularly unreasonable given the scale of the cuts that we've endured for, for 10 years. So the offer. The offer that was made is Scrooge Light. Initially, they offered a 2% pay increase and the details you can see what was offered on there. So what then happened is that that initial offer was taken via the various stratas from national to region to branch and then back. And our region met and was very clear that that was to be rejected. Unfortunately, all three unions rejected this offer and agreed to enter into further negotiations. So what I'd say at this stage is that our anger is not with the local councils. Our anger is with the government that claps us on a Thursday, then slaps us on a payday. Our anger is with the government who are prepared to give out, as was announced today, uh, sorry, yesterday, round about £500 million to enable us to get £10 off a meal in a restaurant Monday to Wednesday. That would cover the cost of paying 10% pay rise for every, every single local government worker, whether you're directly employed or otherwise. That would be the real cost of the government. So instead of giving out freebies in terms of meals, they should be paying those that they clapped on a Thursday. So quite rightly, the three unions rejected that initial offer. We believed that was Scrooge like. So what then happened was at the end, the local government association came back with an improved offer. Your eyes aren't fooling you. Let me just take you back to the previous one. We could spend half an hour playing spot the difference, but I'll make it easy for you. The only difference is the they offered us an additional 2.75% pay increase. And I can tell you that a significant number of local authorities had already budgeted for 3%. They'd already budgeted for a figure that the government was offering us less than. What they didn't offer us was any reduction in the working week. And what they never considered was a flat rate claim. So what we'd put in for was £10 an hour minimum or 2.75%. If you earn £28,000 and you get 2.75%, you'll get considerably less than if you earn £285,000. So our, our view is that the flat rate claim should have been considered as well. That was rejected. So that was then their final offer. And again, in terms of democratic accountability, we knew that there was a national meeting on the 5th of June, so on the 4th of June, your Northwest Regional Reps called the meeting and it was very clear that those present by an overwhelming majority uh, voted to reject the offer, to campaign and to consult members. And what we recognised and had an honest, robust exchange about at that meeting was how difficult it would be to hold a ballot given that there's no workplace, no real workplace activity going on, 
um, to carry out the consultation, given the difficulties and challenges with uh, IT and virtual, um, virtual meetings. But that was the steer that your members were given to go back. That was on the 4th of June. So on the 5th of June, that national committee from Unison met and decided to launch the consultation, which is now what has been what has started. What was also agreed alongside that is that we should be campaigning for additional central government funding. And I'll say again, this is not about having a go at local employers, local councils, wherever you work, who had already budgeted for more than the 2.75 were being offered. This is about making sure that central government is held accountable for not providing the, the local government association with sufficient funds to, to pay us what we, we know that we, we deserve. So the consultation has started. It started in the week of the 22nd of June. The closing date is the 11th of August. Each region will gather, there's 11 regions remember, each region will gather its reports from the 11th of August, and then they'll, they will be sent to the national, uh, our national headquarters by the 18th of August. The other two trade unions uh, have adopted a similar time timetable, and they too will be considering the outcome of those in late August. Late August, early September, there's no date set yet. We'll be looking to meet as a, as, as a Unison NJC to consider um, the outcome of those, those ballot results. And balloting this time will be different. Um, it can be done by survey, it can be done um, by postal ballot, but whichever branch you're in, they'll be now, they will be setting up the processes to make sure that everybody, everybody is able to take part in this. And I need to make it very clear, this is a consultative ballot on the pay offer. It's not a ballot whether or not you wanna take strike action. It's what do you think of the pay offer? Do you think you're worth more? And what are you prepared to do about it to force the negotiators back to the central government to say, we believe we need more money. Instead of the 500 million for a cheap meal Monday to Wednesday for August, we think it should be paid to those vital members who you've clapped every Thursday and now intend to slap us on a payday. And if you needed any reminder of the way that local government have been treated, then I hope these cartoons are helpful because they've treated us with complete contempt. You've got buffoon number one in the middle and buffoon number two to the right of the middle and the way that they're treating us is as Scrooge-like. So there's a number of things that we believe you should and could be doing. It's vital that your branch has an up-to-date email address that you have given permission for us to use. If you're unsure, contact your branch office. You'll be asked simply to vote to accept or reject the offer. Many branches in the Northwest region have taken a decision to reject it. Your region is recommending rejection. We are one of 11 regions. Remember to vote in this consultative ballot because it's our union and it's our pay. And the bottom line is that we, we vote to reject this one, to make the government accountable for local government services, and two, because it's a disgraceful, insulting and derisory officer, offer. And very simply, they cannot be allowed to simply clap us because it's cheap and then slap us because it suits them. So that's the end of the presentation. Hope that hopefully that's covered the process and the pay offer. Happy to take questions probably towards the end. Um, and if we can't answer them, please send them in. And we'll put them in the chat room and we'll answer them accordingly. Thanks very much indeed, Linda. Thanks, Glenn. Thanks for that presentation. As I said at the beginning, we will send those slides out to branches um, and we do expect branch secretaries to send those out to members. Um, what I'll do now is I'll bring in my comrade, Rena Ward, who's the deputy convener, and she will explain to you more about the Northwest position, which is to reject. Rena. Okay, thank you, Linda. First of all, our pay rise is absolutely affordable. When you think about it, the fact is the government have found money for HS2, which is a lot of money. They found money for upgrading Trident and they found £900,000 for a paint job for the Prime Minister's plane. And there's numerous other government uh, vanity projects, yet they're saying there's no money for us. So this tells you it's just a matter of priorities. And clearly, those of us in local government who's delivering public services 
They're just not a priority for this government. And think about it, another fact, the MPs voted to give themselves a pay rise of 3.1% and they got an additional £10,000 in recognition of the additional pandemic expenses. And by the way, the government said to councils, we'll give you money to deal with the pandemic and they haven't delivered. OK, and the cost of that and people who know me know I glaze over when it comes to maths, but it took me time to do this. The total bill for that, for the MPs pay rises and the additional 10% is £8 million, 125,000. OK, £8 million. That's a lot of money. A decent pay rise actually pays for itself. You heard earlier as part of Glenn's presentation, so half the total bill is about £500 million. The rest of it will be met. If we get a decent pay rise, which we deserve, we will pay increased income tax and we will pay increased national insurance contribution. OK, and think about this. It's a fact. Google does not record its UK advertising sales here. here. OK, they're registered in Ireland so where the corporate taxes are lower. So the UK overall has lost out on an estimated £1.5 billion in taxes from Google. Think about that. That's money that the Tory government could get. Starbucks has a thousand shops in the UK and it's taking £387 million in sales. But on all those sales, what did it pay? £4 million in tax last year. I'm telling you now, that ain't right. A lunchtime organiser pays more in terms of percentage of their income than, than, than Starbucks have. It's not right. Virgin Healthcare, okay, it's been awarded two billion pounds worth of NHS and local authority deals, but it hasn't recorded a profit to pay any taxes on. And Richard Branson, everyone knows who he is, he is a tax exile in the British Virgin Islands. And Virgin Atlantic has not paid any profit taxes in the UK for two years. So why isn't the government going after them? Top shop. Everybody knows about Philip Green. He's registered, and, and he owns other companies, registered in Monaco under his wife's name. So again, the dinner, when I was at school, we called them dinner ladies. Now we call them lunchtime organisers. Lunchtime organisers, in terms of pro rata of the income they earn, pay more in taxes than Philip Green's and, and the millions that he earns. It's just, it is not on, okay? And we, at Unison, we are a trade union. And what do trade unions do? We act as a collective, okay? We are a union of solidarity. So see them? Reject the offer. That is why we need a decent pay rise and why we should vote to reject the pay offer. The majority of our union consists of, consists of low paid members, care workers, school support staff, home care workers reject the offer. We might be able to manage, actually I could manage, but a lot of our members can't and that is a fact. See them, reject the offer, support them. I meet members all the time. I'm a full-time assistant branch secretary. And I meet members who, who can't manage. They're worrying constantly about how they're gonna pay the bills and how they're gonna feed their families. Members like this reject the offer. Anyone who is in work should be able to live on what they earn. <coughs> Excuse me. And not have to rely on food banks or have to claim any welfare benefits. People like them and their families reject the offer. Far too many of our members are in, in work poverty. It is not on. Reject the offer. So please support the Northwest recommendation, which is to reject the offer. Our pay claim is affordable. Reject, reject, reject. Thank you. Thank you, Rena. Reject the offer. Now, if I can bring in Connor, um, who, once again, I forgot to say at the beginning, but thank you very much for all the work that you've done in getting this presentation together. 
if I can ask Connor to now give a short video presentation. Counselling skill work is a key to so many things in our lives. The current health pandemic has highlighted this more than ever to the general public. And yet these key workers are being offered a disgusting 2.75% pay increase. It's an insult. These key workers, our members, have gone far beyond their normal day jobs to keep this country moving. Here are just a few examples of how our members have adjusted to accommodate the needs of the services we've been asked to provide. As ever, high quality public services which have been clapped by the public and then slapped by central government. My name's Amy and I'm a local government key worker. My role is Economic and Community Development Officer based within the regeneration team of a local authority. Throughout the coronavirus pandemic, I've worked on our community hub, making phone calls to vulnerable and elderly residents to check that they're okay. I've also worked with local businesses offering support and advice on government guidance and any available grants and funding. More recently, I'm helping to implement measures along the high street to enable businesses to reopen safely and for people to feel safe to return. Hi, we work as street cleansing operatives and I've been working throughout the pandemic, including weekends. Daily, our job involves litter picking, keeping the area safe for the public to use, collect fly tips, weed spray and removing graffiti. At the start of lockdown, we volunteered to be trained to work on the refuge teams if needed. Work key workers and keep this country running. Hi, my name's Christine. As well as doing my normal job, from the first week of lockdown, I have been contacting people who had volunteered for the community hub. This is in the region of 400 households. I have also been helping out in other sections where there has been a staff shortage due to colleagues self-isolating or shielding others in their family. Hi, I'm Peter. I'm an environmental health technician. I've worked throughout the coronavirus pandemic and it's literally been all hands to the pump. Uh, whilst many of my colleagues have been self-isolating, I've been dealing with uh, an increase in fly tipping, also smoke nuisance as a result of uh, burning household waste. Uh, I've also been covering for our dog warden and have regularly emptied a number of the dog waste bins across the borough. Hi, I'm Tony, a local government key worker. My role is contact centre supervisor. My team and I have been working through the pandemic in the council offices, supporting and reassuring the public in the community to ensure the services have continued to run smoothly. Hi, I'm Mudge, Senior Civil Enforcement Officer. I've been working during this pandemic, delivering parcels to the elderly and vulnerable in the borough. Thank you. Uh, very great thanks to each one of those members who have volunteered to give their time to give us a short video just to show the work and the, the way our members have accommodated and have stepped up to be able to keep this country running. Um, so now we'll make it more interactive and I'll start to take some questions. Um, I'll read the questions out. I'm not sure whether you can actually see the questions or not, and then I'll direct them to either, either I'll answer them or I'll direct them to one of the panel members. So the first question I've got is from Paula. Are the other trade unions recommending to reject this measly offer? Um, Glenn, can I bring you in on that? Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, each trade union nationally has its own series of uh, process for con consulting. What we've agreed is similar parallel timetables for the consultation. I'm not aware that any of the other uh, regions have taken a different position other than ours, which is neither to recommend rejection or acceptance. OK, um, Rena, uh, taxes will be hiked and it will be across the board. It won't be borne by the wealthiest. How do we get members involved or even interested in fighting these pay offers when the response we get, like every other year since 2008, is that, is that when it's voted on down in London, we automatically lose as their vote out weigh, outweighs ours. 
2.75% to someone living down south is worth a hell of a lot more than 2.75% to us up north. Rena, you're on mute. No, Glenn, 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 do you want to come in on that? Oh, hang on, Rena. No, Glenn. Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, a um, number of responses really. Uh, I mean, it's true that what often happens is when we go, when it says we go back down to London, I'm assuming that means when we go to Unison's NJC, which takes place at headquarters. And it is true that often, some of the other regions uh, outvote us. It is also fair to say that uh, the Northwest does carry significant influence um, and is able, to, is able to sway the positions of the other regions uh, often. Uh, that's certainly what has happened this year. Uh, in terms of the 2.75 being worth more, um, I think it's a fairly well accepted fact that the cost of living in London is significantly higher than the 2.75 difference. That's why they get a London living uh, allowance weight on top of that. Um, I don't think anybody who I've spoken to anywhere within the union, including some of those regions who were prepared, the few regions who were prepared to accept the offer, nobody at the NJC was saying this is anything other than a derisory, disgraceful, offensive offer. What they were struggling with was the ability to raise resistance to it, the ability to get people to vote and oppose it and be prepared to do something about it. So I think we should take pride in the fact that as one region amongst others, we will be leading the fight, leading this union, hopefully, into a position where we do say to central government, we're worth more, so, so make it ready. Like Rena has uh, eloquently presented the reasons why we should be voting to force the government to rethink its position on offering local government workers something. If there's multi-billionaires who are able to pay more, to keep more offshore uh, in tax havens than this, this total bill would cost to, to cover local government, then I think it's right what we're doing. And yes, we may well end up losing the, the democratic decision when the other regions and the other trade unions feed that back, but that shouldn't stop us from doing what exactly what we're doing, is making a stand, taking a lead, and taking the fight back to central government. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, Glenn. Thanks, Glenn. Um, Rena, if I can bring you, can we hear you now, Rena? No, no. No, sorry, Rena, we've, we, we seem to have lost you. We'll keep trying. Um, Carl, you're, you're going to talk about um, what we do next. So if I can bring you in on the next question which says reject and an industrial action if needed. We've been used and abused long enough and now it's time to show that we're serious. Do you want to come in now rather than at the end about what we need to do to show that we are serious? Absolutely. Um, I think what's clear is that we've got, the only way we can be taken seriously is by rejecting the offer. There are a number of steps to take action, but in the first place, what we need to do is set a very clear marker from our region, which is the most, uh, we have the most members in the Northwest. We're not outnumbered by any region. Um, we've led on this pay campaign from the start and to keep moving forwards as the most, uh, uh, as the region that fights the most for these issues, we need to reject this offer. So regardless of anything else, yes, in the future, we may be able to take that action. But the important point now is to move forward by rejecting the derisory offer for all the reasons that all my colleagues and comrades have said so far today and to set that marker that says we are not accepting this we need a high number of people getting out to vote and we need to be very clear that we're rejecting this derisory pay offer it is clearly affordable we need to ask for the money from central government this is not really about local government at all it's about making sure that we ask for the money 
and we vote to say that we need a better offer for all of the work, for the money we've lost over the past 10 years, but for all of the work that our members have been doing during this uh, COVID uh, situation. Uh, everyone's been very keen to get out and clap for key workers. We need to turn some of that clapping into action on behalf of our members. Thanks, Carl. Thank you for that comment. Uh, the next question, whilst I'd love a 10% pay rise, how realistic is it that this is achievable? For every day we'll need to go on strike to attempt to get this offer, it would take 77 days for me to make that money back. Whilst in the long term this would be nice, it's going to take several days and personally this is money I cannot afford. Reena, have we got you or have we lost you tonight? No, no, okay. Um, I'll bring Glenn in in a minute with that one, but uh, one thing I just wanted to comment from my branch was that um, a lot of my members um, possibly possibly had the same the same feelings as as this question, um, but it was only when they were out there doing the work, when members of the public were coming out, thanking them, baking cakes for the refuse workers, writing letters in, getting thank you cards, that they started to believe themselves that yes, actually the work that we do it is valued. The public at this time they are behind us which maybe in the past, sometimes we've not had that. Um, and that's given them the, the strength and the determination to make them feel that, yes, I am worth it. Um, Glenn, is there anything you want to add to that? Yeah, thanks, Chair. I mean, I understand the sentiments behind the, the question entirely. I've not met anybody, I've been in local government for 32 years, I've not met anybody who wants to take industrial action. I've not met anybody who wants to lose money I've not met anybody who wants to cause disruption to the members of the public, the service users, the vulnerable people who, who they work for. But I've also met hundreds and thousands of people who are absolutely fed up to the back teeth of the reaction year in, year out, we're given either a pay freeze or a 1% pay rise. Who, and we have suffered while we, whilst we've seen, and these are facts, whilst we've seen the gap between the, the, the poor and the incredibly rich grow. So what I've, my question is to, to, those, to those people who I have absolute respect for is at a time when we've been given a higher profile for public service than ever before in the history of local government, if we're not prepared to make a stand now, what will it take until we do? And I'm sorry, but in terms of the position that your Northwest region has taken, I believe it's absolutely the right one. Nobody wants to take strike action, but neither do we want to have to see the sort of situation that's described in the next question, where people are being forced to take two or three jobs simply to put food on the table. In this day and age, when we remain one of the richest countries in the world, it is Dickensian what we're being driven back to. And we are the poor relations within public services. So if not now, then when? And I think it's time we stood up and be counted. And if we're out on our own in the Northwest, then so be it, we will be outvoted, but it will not be for the sake of giving it a go. Thank you. Thanks, Glenn. Yeah, the question that Glenn re um, related to there was I work full time in local government and have up until recently had to work part work a part time 10 hour a week job for the last seven years. Unfortunately, due to personal reasons, I had to leave this position in December. I'm now clinging on to £36.12 pence until next Wednesday. The reason I had my additional job was to pay maintenance for my daughter shouldn't have to work two jobs to make ends meet. You are worth it. Our next question, this is our best chance to capitalise on public support for key workers and send a message to the government that they can't make us pay for the cost of the lockdown. On the other hand, an acceptance or a low turnout will send a message of weakness and invite more government aggression. I think, Carl, that one should go to you about what we should do next. I think that's exactly right. That's exactly what we're talking about. The Nobody wants a pay dispute, uh, as, as has been said, and to refer back to what people were saying. But it's not just about how much a day's strike would take to make back. It is how much we have lost over the 10 years of not having a fair pay rise. Those are the calculations we should be making. It's every time one of our members has to go to a uh, food bank. It's every time one of our members has to claim benefits. It's every time one of our members 
has to think about taking on another job to make ends meet. If we don't fight for this now, it will be seen as weakness. We will never have a better opportunity to explain to the general public why our members are worth a proper pay deal. That is where we are now. If we don't fight for it now, if we don't get out and vote in this first step, and it is just a first step, if we don't get out and say that this pay offer is not good enough, then it will be seen as weakness. And why, could, why should they even offer us this next time? We know that many councils, as have already been said, have already budgeted for 3%. This is below the level at which the councils were prepared to pay in the first instance. We need to push back as hard as we can and ask those councils to go and ask the government for money. That is where our strength lies. This is our best position to talk about what we have been doing and how vital we are to our society. That's our only way forward. Thanks, Carla. I think it's worth remembering what Glenn said in his presentation is that our battle is not with our employers. Our battle is with central government and it's to get them to pay us more money. I think what Rena's um, uh, quite aptly told us all is the way that the money is there and the money is being spent on other things. And why isn't the money being spent on us? Um, Technicality now, are we able to do a survey monkey to get a sense of feeling regarding taking industrial action? Glenn? Yeah, just to remind, it's a good question, just to remind people, um, this is a consultative ballot. It's not an industrial action ballot. What you will be asked and what you'll be asked on the ballot paper is do you accept or reject the, the, the pay offer? That, that, will be the, that is the wording on the ballot paper. Now, for some of you, that will go out by Survey Monkey, and in effect, this is a survey of whether or not you accept that pay offer. If it is rejected right across the unions, right across the regions, then you, there will be followed. There will follow a formal industrial action ballot, which will ask you: Are you prepared to take industrial action given the rejection of the pay offer? So it's in two separate, completely separate um, stages. So the first stage is. The consultative ballot, which is you'll get via Survey Monkey, via um, postal ballot, that will be coming to your to your doors, to your computers by the 11th. You have to respond by the 11th of August. That is a cons consultation. The outcome of that consultation will lead to a formal industrial back action ballot if it's rejected. And what we're asking you to do at this stage is reject the pay offer. It's as simple as that. So yes, we could do a survey monkey about whether or not industrial action is likely to be successful or not, or whether or not people would be prepared to take part in it. And some people will vote to recommend or accept this offer in the first stage, depending on what they think about the likelihood of industrial action. It's not actually what you've been asked to vote on in the consultation in the first phase. So the Northwest recommendation, Northwest regional recommendation at the first stage of the consultation is the offer is so poor, it has to be rejected. The second phase is if everybody else agrees or there's a majority decision to reject it, then they have to go back to the negotiators, tell them it's been rejected and issue notice that we now intend to issue a ballot for industrial action. And then that will depend on the outcome of that. So we're not at that stage yet, but I accept the two ballots are interconnected. So I hope that clarifies the two stage process. Thank you. Thanks, Glenn. Can I also um, just ask you on the next one, uh, mainly because of your national position. Um, I'm a teaching assistant in Salford and unfortunately schools are not seen in such a great light. Parents seem to think that we've been sitting on our backsides during lockdown rather than going into school to care for key work children. Will you be asking teaching unions to support this claim? Yeah, it's at me, sorry, yeah. Um... Yeah, well, I'm please. sorry if you think that. It's certainly not the view of everyone I've spoken to. Um, and it's, it's, it's irked me that people talk about the, the reopening of schools because schools have never been closed. So I think that the, the invaluable work that you do uh, is, is rightly put on a, a pedestal where it, exactly where it should be. Very much the, um, the unsung heroes, in my view, and very much mistreated and exploited by, by central government who refuse to recognise you. Um, in terms of whether or not the teacher unions will support, it will come as no surprise that one of the, one of the things the, trade, the Tories have done is produce the Trade Union Act, which makes it even more difficult for non-associated unions to take uh, industrial action in support of uh, a dispute that they're not directly impacted upon. So there are things that the other unions will be doing, 
Um, but we already have a massive amount of membership amongst us in terms of Unison, in terms of Uniting GMB. And it's my firm belief, my firm belief, that in order to bring any workplace in any country to a halt, we bring out, for example, the cleaners. If a building isn't cleaned, nobody has to go into it on the health and safety grounds. And it's that creative approach to industrial action. I'd like our union, our unions, respectively, respectfully to start to start considering. So I'm sorry if you feel like that, the, the author of that question. It's certainly not the view of Unison Northwest, quite the opposite. Um, and I'd like to think that the teaching unions will do whatever they can to support it. But in terms of being balloted for industrial action, they can't. But think of this. Who opens the buildings in which they teach? Who cleans the buildings in which they teach? Who cleans the places where they go to have their ablutions? And it isn't teachers. It's our members. That's how critical they are to the services. And that's how influential they can be if they take industrial action. If it comes to that after the first ballot, and then we move to a second industrial action ballot. Thank you. Thank, thanks, Glenn. Um, Rena, have we got you back yet or not? I have no idea. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, my <laughs> word. Oh, my word. I don't Please know. do what... not swear. No, I'm not going to. But I do think this is really important to say about people's concerns, and I absolutely get it, but actually uh, the Office for Budget Responsibility shows that the government spent, and you know I don't do maths, people that know me are glaze over, listen to this figure, 137 billion, with a B, billion pounds bailing out the banks. So if you think about it, one billion pounds is 1,000 million. So think of what the cost of our pay claim is. So when the government says it's not affordable and we're, they blame us for everything, the money is there. And I already said in my earlier contribution how we can make sure the money is there. It's about the political will and the political co commitment. For far too long, this government have denigrated us. They've told us that we're, we get gold-plated pensions and then they clapped us and then they slapped us and they said we're unskilled and they said we're back office, we don't matter. We absolutely matter and we are, the money is there to pay us. So think about, it's not just the future of you, the future of all the members of your family, your extended family, your friends, your comrades. It's about the solidarity. This is so doable. And if, if ever there was a time to do it, absolutely, it is now we can do it. Thank you. Thanks, Rena. It's good, good to have you back. Um, it doesn't seem that we've got any more questions um, coming up now, just a few comments. So um, I'll bring Carl in now. Um, as I said, he's the vice chair of the local government service group. Carl will now go through what branches need to do, what branch secretaries need to do, uh, and then also what members need to do. Carl? Thanks, Linda. Uh, we've touched on most of it already. Um, what's important about this and, and what's important in an event like this is to realize that everyone who's watching this is the union this isn't about the branch secretaries it's not about the branch officers it's not about us elected full-time officers for the region it's about everyone going out and speaking to their colleagues speaking to other members of the union that they work with to talk through these issues for people that couldn't come or didn't know about this event because what's most important over the next few weeks is that as many people as possible vote we need a high turnout as much as anything else now consultation will open later this month each branch will do it differently branch secretaries will be making a decision on how they're going to do that i think there's going to be a lot of mix of um, emailed uh, consultation and some postal uh, consultation. Certainly my branch, Manchester branch, is going to do a mix of that. But what everyone wants to do, as much of it online as possible, partly on a cost level, partly on the fact that post's difficult at the moment, but mostly because it allows us to remind people. So one of the most important things that people can do right now is to make sure that they check that their email addresses and membership details are up to date with the union. It's really important that we get as many of those preferably private email addresses that we can contact you via. This is important throughout the whole process and will be more so if we do get to the next stages further on. So please check your details, make sure we've got email addresses. Every branch needs that. 
um, so that we can then move forward with the consultation. Uh, the consultation will end on the 11th of August. There's going to be a lot of reminders between now and then. Uh, most branches are going to hold pay meetings, virtual ones like this. Again, my own branch will be doing them to talk to people and to try and get across the message. It's really important we talk to each other. It's really important, as Rena says, reject, reject, reject. Get that message out, talk to people, and then respond. Make sure we get a high turnout for this consultation and we send a message back to the government that we need to be paid properly. Thanks, Linda. Thanks, Carl. Um, I'm looking in the chat facility now. I can't see that we have got any more questions. Um, as I did say that we will send the slides out. Um, Rena, if you want to um, send out, send something into region of the examples of that you made of where the money is, um, but how it's being spent instead of being spent on us, uh, that would be good. We can send those examples out to branches for those that want to use them. Um, also, can I, Glenn, can I just bring you in uh, if you just want to mention about the Tower Hamlets strike? Glenn, you're on mute. Sorry, thanks very much. It may seem unrelated to what we've been talking about for the last 45 minutes, but there, there is a live dispute taking place in the local government branch in London in Tower Hamlets. Um, by a, There's an attempt to privatise, marketise their terms and conditions by a company called Tower Rewards. It's been dressed up as very beneficial to the workers. It's been dressed up as um, a great bonus for all the staff concerned, but in reality, it's a complete attack on their terms and conditions. So it may mean nothing to you, but it, it, it gives people down there an enormous boost. If you can get in touch with your branch secretary, simply to ask them to do two things, contact the John McLaughlin, the branch secretary, send in a, a message of support and solidarity to the members of Tower Hamlet's local government branch, and also get your branch exec to consider making a donation to what is a legitimately recognized trade dispute. So it is all about what happens down there um, affects us up here. That's why we're in the middle of a national consultation as to whether or not you accept or reject. And I think it's fairly clear what the message is from your platform speakers. I suspect it's to reject. Thanks very much. Thanks, Glenn. Um, well, it just, just leaves me now to thank you all. Thank you for the time that you've taken out of your evening to join this event. I hope it's been useful for you. I hope you've been able to get some information from it that you can take brand back to your branches, take back to follow uh, fellow branch members who have not been able to join the event, and um, get talking in your offices, in your bin wagons, out there in the parks, in the schools. You know, start talking to people, start telling them what we've been telling you tonight, start helping members believe that they are worth it, that the money is there for them and that they should be paid a decent pay rise. Um, like we've been saying all night is reject the pay offer. Um, can I finally give a very big thanks to Connor who's facilitated this meeting yeah. for us. Um, yeah. yeah, it's been absolutely great. Yeah, well done, Carl. We're giving you, giving you a round of applause, Connor. Thank you so much. Um, he's also telling me in the chat facility that um, there'll be a video of this meeting which will be uh, you'll be able to watch back and share on the Unison Northwest Facebook um, shortly after it finishes tonight. So maybe you want to just highlight that in your branches to colleagues and just point them in the direction and just ask them to spend a few minutes just looking at this um, event. OK, all right. Thank you very much, colleagues. Thank you for all the work you do and please stay safe.